What's up, Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make an electronic pop song like this. What's up everyone, Austin here, and we are back with another video. And for the video today, I am gonna be going over how to make an electronic pop song, like the one that you heard in that preview just a second ago. So we're gonna be going over how to kind of create some of those synths, layer up elements, pick your percussion sounds, and get that nice kind of movement that you're gonna hear in something like that Future Bass inspired electronic pop song. So we'll be going over the entire session, but before we hop into Cubase and go over that session, I did just want to take this chance to thank today's sponsor, Antares. Antares is currently running their Voxtronica celebration all month long to celebrate electronic music production. So since they're running this all April, they've reached out to us to see if we would do a video where we use some of their plugins creatively in something like an electronic pop song. So that's what we're going to be doing today. To celebrate Voxtronica, they are running a giveaway where they're giving away subscriptions to Autotune Unlimited, Loop Cloud, and All Art. Plus they're giving away a free Articulator Talkbox plugin if you sign up for a trial for Auto Autotune Unlimited. You'll see us use Articulator quite a bit in this video, so keep your eyes peeled. In case you didn't already know, Autotune Unlimited is their subscription program where you can get plugins like Autotune Pro, Autotune EFX, Harmony Engine, Vocodist, Slice, Articulator, and a ton of others for one payment of $24.99 per month. And if you choose to pay annually, it's $14.58 per month. If you want to read more about Autotune Unlimited, or you want to get your free copy of Articulator, or you just want to see some of the other loops, plugins, samples, or enter that giveaway that we've kind of talked about already, you can click the link in the description. If you do click that link in the description, it is an affiliate link, so we do get a little bit of kickback, so all of the support is much appreciated. But once again, thank you to Antares for sponsoring this video, and thank you so much to all of you guys for always being so receptive of our sponsors. It truly means a lot that we can do something like this every now and then. But with that said, let's actually take this opportunity to hop into Cubase and get working on this production. Let's check it out. All right, so we are in the session. I'm gonna start at a tempo of 160. I think that feels pretty good for the electronic pop vibe that I'm gonna be going for. And to start, I wanna start with just kind of a key sound. I noticed a lot of these electronic pop songs will either start with like a piano or an e-piano or some kind of Rhodes or something. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. So here's what I have. I'm just gonna be using the Easy Keys Dream Machine. I, for some reason, I love the way it sounds. And it'll have the chords here so you can kind of see what we're doing. This is a progression I've got. I've noticed that a lot of the time in these kind of electronic pop songs, um, they're using sevenths just to kind of give it a little bit of extra spice. I love that vibe. It kind of gives it just a little bit of extra texture. And to me, it kind of has this like somber mellow vibe because I don't love super, super, super upbeat, bright electronic pop. So this to me gives it kind of a nice cool dynamic. So I'm gonna start with this and then we're gonna layer up some synths because this sound is not gonna suffice for the genre at hand. So let's go ahead and layer some stuff up. So one layer that I've got is those exact same chords and then I've just got this Cream of Emotion pad from Omnisphere. I love this pad. It's got a nice little bit of like weird kind of trailing off. And that's definitely gonna get me closer to that vibe, especially layered over that Rhodes. I've also got this top end bell that is just like pitched up an octave and it's this preset from Easy Keys. I've actually used this on quite a few videos, but to me, this just gives it a nice little bit of shimmer on top without uh, having way too much transient. So I'm gonna let that play through once and then I decided to bring in kind of a harder road sound because what we have now is not super intense, but again, I'm just using easy keys with a slightly different preset, the seven dimension. And I've got these velocities quite a bit harder. So you can see on here, if we go to velocity, we're farther up to like almost like 90 where I think the other presets like down here in the 60s maybe. And kind of similar to the last uh, song that we kind of did on the channel, I like to layer synths and the way that I start to layer key sounds is I want them all to kind of do a different purpose. So this main Rhodes is kind of giving me that main uh, sustaining melody. And then that pad is just giving me a little bit of that electronic vibe. These warbled bells are kind of giving me this like wide kind of bright spaciness. And then these harder Rhodes are just giving me a little bit of attack because nothing so far has that much attack to it. And that is 
probably going to be it for about now. For the keys, I think we can go ahead and start layering up um, some percussion. So I'll probably just start with some snaps. I got some snaps loaded into Groove Agent. One thing that I really like doing is picking three snaps and I'll have one be consistent and then I'll have the others kind of alternate. So it'll be like snap one and two and then snap one and three. So it kind of just gives it this cool kind of lifelike feeling where every snap feels a little bit different and you can kind of see that here in the MIDI. And that's just kind of a nice little tip that I've picked up from listening to a lot of pop music. I've noticed that snaps start to um, kind of give a back and forth, especially once you kind of layer them up. So yeah, just kind of alternating your snaps to, to give you a little bit more liveliness. I think it's always a really nice tip, especially if it's gonna be pretty sparse. All right, I wanted to get a bass in there just to kind of give me some low end, but it's not doing too, too much. It's just this Ultra Vibe pad. We've given this away for free. It's just in the Saucy Basses pack. So if you wanna get our freebies, there's always a link to that in the description. It'll just take you to a portal on our website. And uh, it sounds a little bit something like this. And then that is just kind of giving everything else a nice little bit of low end without doing too much melodically. I think it's time to start layering up some drums. I kind of like the way that this builds out. We'll, we'll probably flesh out a structure a little bit later, but for right now, I at least want to put some more elements in so we can start to feel how this is gonna come together. All right, so I went ahead and layered a couple more things and I've added in some drums right here. So let's go ahead and talk about the drums. It's really nothing crazy. We're gonna keep those snaps and then just layer up uh, a couple extra different layers. Specifically, we've got a kick and then some perk loops. So we've got this uh, clock loop that is from an Echo Soundworks pack. And then we've got this kind of like upbeat funk group that is from, I believe, Sounds of Life. And then we've just got a couple little percussive things. So we've got this like really reverbed um, kind of tonal hit. And then we've got this kind of decayed, just perk snap. And that's doing a lot. We've got that bass that we talked about just a second ago. And then we've added just a couple more synths. Let's go ahead and talk about those. So we have added these like little gated plucks. I feel like they kind of do something cool and they take me to a bit more electronic uh, spot rather than just like straight pop. And they have an ARP on them. And that to me gives it a nice little bit of movement and just makes it a little bit more unique rather than just having these big sustained chords. And then I've got a nice big spacey pad. Kind of filling out those low mids, giving me a little bit of extra width. We've got some brass. And as you can hear, I've started to kind of incorporate some um, some actual movement with things like EQ. So let's go ahead and hear this verse now with everything in it. Now we just need some kind of pre-chorus and the pre-chorus needs to have a good buildup. So for this pre-chorus, I decided to just change up the chords a little bit. So we have this. And it just gives us a nice cool little bit of change. That way it's not the same thing copy and pasted because I'm sure for this chorus slash drop, we're gonna go back to that kind of main progression. So I've got it on that warbled bell preset. I also have it on a couple others. We've got those gated plucks also doing this. Just doing some opening and then we have these electronic brass. Opening up with a nice little bit of ladder filter and then this is one of the cooler sounds in this kind of buildup and it sees saw sense from Omnisphere. And once again, we're kind of utilizing uh, kind of like that movement that we have in the um, kind of gated blocks.
and then that just feels really nice with everything. We added a little bass drop that way. I don't want a ton of bass through this because I want this to kind of shrink up so we can have a really, really, really big drop. But with those kind of four chord um, patterns and presets mixed with this kind of big long sub drop, So of course, for an electronic song, we need a bit of percussion rise, so let's kind of look at that. We can take a look at this kick. We do have a kick that's just kind of filtering up. We're gonna do the kind of typical, hit it on an eighth note and then hit it on a 16th note and then just kind of speed it up. And then I had these like 30 second rolls, but I just took them out because I'll probably put a drum fill there instead. And then we also have something like this. We've got this clap loop that I found in Splice. And a lot of the time when I find a loop, what I'll do is I'll kind of download that and then just chop it up. So I've done that with this uh, Graves loop and with this FM drum loop. Um, so the Graves loop just sounds like this. And then the FM loop sounds like this. And I've actually just pitched that up using Auto-Tune. So I went ahead and reset Auto-Tune just so I can kind of show you how I'm using this. What I'm gonna do is, let me actually turn right off and then I'm gonna make sure that this is on instrument and then let's hit right. I'm just gonna adjust this transpose as it plays. And then that's it. We'll kind of keep that as is. And then we've just got a couple impacts and risers and stuff like that. So here's what it sounds like going from this kind of verse to this uh, pre-chorus. And what I'm gonna do is obviously filter that out with something like Pro-Q, so I can just kind of sweep all those highs off and sweep that up as we go. All right, now we've got this all filtered up. I did go ahead and add in this kind of cool little perk fill, and I just took away some of the volume. As you can see, we've done quite a bit of automation here, so let me close that up so it's not confusing, and then we will build this drop. But here's what this sounds like with that kind of filter build up. All right, and then let's go ahead and let's start building up this drop. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with drums and I'll get a kick, snare, and some perk loops in there. We can take a look at that. All right, so I've got all these drop drums fleshed out. It's gonna be that same kick that we used in the verse. I'm just using a higher velocity so it hits a little bit harder. And then for this kind of style, it's really all about finding really, really cool snares that kind of fill out the space. So Splice has quite a ton of these like future bassy pop ones. I've got a couple right here and then I've got a couple more. I just like to pick a bunch and then I'll kind of play through them. And so all of the snares layered up with that kick sound a little bit something like this. And that's from layering four different snares. So I'm not having any phase issues. They're all made really solidly. So they kind of just blend together. I'm not even doing any extra processing on these, literally just adjusting them with volume within Groove Agent. Then we have a couple loops kind of similar to what we used earlier, but they're just doing a little bit something different. So again, from I think our Sounds of Life pack, if not, then fully fix. Mix that with some impacts and some kind of hits and stuff like that. And really, it's not doing anything too crazy. This is all we're going to need for the drop. That cool thing was just a little drum fill that I found and kind of pitched. And then we have another drum fill. The only thing that we end up adding to the second half is I have a ride kind of doing a consistent... Um, eighth note or quarter note, I think. And then I just have a hi-hat loop to kind of give it some extra consistency. So here's what we have for the second half. Now, I'm good with that. Let's go ahead and let's start adding these synths because we get a lot of questions on this. All right, so I'm gonna break down one of these synth sounds. We have quite a few layers, but really they're all doing the same thing. And I've kind of broken the sound down in our last um, how to make different kind of synth preset videos. So we're just kind of making a wub 
The main thing that you want to keep in mind with this is if you're going to layer this, make sure that they all have kind of the same LFO. And if they have any compression, which these don't, make sure that that kind of matches because as you duplicate, you can change things like wavetables. You can add FM synthesis to some. But what's most important is that the movement of the matches. So right now, this is going to be doing a 1 8 um, kind of re-trigger. And then I just have that rising to a 16th and with a 1 8 delay. So that means that I can play this right away but it's gonna delay that in eighth note coming in, so it kind of gives me that cool rise. So I really don't even need to sidechain anything. That sidechain is kind of built in with that eighth note delay right here. And mixing that with the kick kind of gives us like 90% of the sound that we're going for. So with that layered over that kick, we have something like this. And as you can see, all this LFO is really controlling is a cutoff to give it that movement. LFO is also going to some rig mod modulation, so we have some modulation coming from uh, oscillator B, and then that's also just kind of modulating that bend. That's just to give us a little bit of difference because it gets a little bit stale if we don't do that. Let me kind of bypass that so you can see it. It just sounds like this. <laughs> Just gives us a nice little bit of extra movement. And then really all we're doing is kind of duplicating that and changing out some wavetables. So we have the second layer. And that really is just kind of pitched down. This is really to give me that kind of scooped metallic-y sound. And then we have another one doing this. And that's just kind of giving me some top end noise. So Wub 1 is the main sound. Wub 2 is for some of that metallic-y kind of scooped thick area. And then Wub 3 is just for some of that top end noise. And then other than that, we have a synth brass. This is actually a preset from Echo Soundworks. I love this preset. It's from their gray pack and I use it all the time. It just sounds like this. And then I just have some plucks that I have sidechained to the kick. So using some sidechain is cool. I didn't end up needing it on most of these synths, but it worked out really well for this pluck. And then the only thing that we're adding for the second half is this little ARP, and this is just from their Chain Smokers pack, the Echo Soundworks pack. And I'm just kind of playing an ARP on this. And I just have that being triggered with Kickstart, same thing we use all the time on the channel. But that's pretty much it for the synth. And really all I wanna do is kind of like duplicate one of those patches and play the root note for the bass. And I'll just kind of, uh, you know, move around some wavetables. So let me get a bass under there for some low end. Here's what we have for the bass. So as you can see, it's doing the same exact triggering on this. It's really not doing anything crazy. There's not even any effects turned on. It's just that, those two oscillators, the sub and the main, and uh, mixed in, it sounds really great. Now it's time to get some vocals in here, um, especially, you know, with the sponsor being Ontaris, we gotta get some vocals and some vocal chop stuff going on. So let's get that working. Now I have a vocal in here. Let's go ahead and listen to the lead. It's really not doing anything crazy. Of course, I'm processing it with some auto-tune, um, but for this song, I actually used EFX instead of auto-tune pro. I'm not doing much graph tuning on this. And so I just picked a retune speed and I'm not using any of the effects on this layer, but you'll see that in a second we do. So here's what the lead sounds like. It's just got some EFX doing the tuning and then I am DSing with Sybil and then um, well, I've just got kind of the usual suspects of some EQ and some compression and it sounds a little bit something like this. Summertime came and went. Now I'm all alone again. Sunny skies to saturate. All the words all fade to gray. And then really why I wanted to use EFX on this is because I've put this on a stereo track and now I've got some tube amp and some duet and some pitch and throat. So this is shifting it down a whole octave, turning the throat length to 180, which kind of gives it that big monster voice. And it's spreading out with um, the duet in this. So pretty similar to like their duo plugin. And it's kind of giving me this nice big wide low texture. All alone again. Sunny skies to saturate. I've been seeing all your stories lately 
And that kind of works well to kind of shift it into that electronic pop vibe. So it's not just your typical kind of pop um, top line. And so we're using that for here. But there was one thing that I did off camera that is kind of the shining star on this. And it's actually using that articulator plugin that we talked about in the intro that's free if you go sign up. So let's go ahead and talk about this. I'll show you what it sounds like. We're using it in a couple different instances. So we have it for the lead in line into this big drop. And then I've also used it for kind of the lead element within the drops. All right, so what I did is I took articulator and I have this lead line right here. Let me go ahead and show you what the vocal sounds like. It's your call, cause baby I'm all in. So what I wanted to do is I wanted something that wasn't just your typical pitch down vocal. So what I did is I duplicated that track and then all you're gonna do for this, the way that you set up articulator is you're gonna have your vocal track and I have that being sent out to no bus. So it's kind of what I'm gonna call a ghost send. And I'm just processing it with some EQ to kind of filter it, some duo to spread it out and then some warm to saturate it. I love this plugin and I use it all the time. Um, I'm just gonna use the crunch setting and drive this up. And let me put this on a bus just so you can kind of hear what it sounds like by itself. It's your call, cause baby I'm all in. So it sounds gnarly. We're not even gonna use it like that. What I am gonna do though, is I have a track right here. This is actually a virtual instrument track and I have serum loaded up. And then what you're gonna do is, uh, first thing on the chain is load in articulator and you're gonna set that up as a side chain. Once you've set that up as a side chain, all you need to do is set up one of your sends on Cubase. It's different for every DAW, but they have different uh, you know, manuals and stuff like that to walk you through it. So I'm just sending this vocal to this track. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna feed through Serum and then it's gonna feed through Articulator. So within Serum, I've got this preset. It's one of the stock ones that I've just made a ton of adjustments on. And then really what's so special about this is I've kind of gone in and adjusted a bunch of things like throat length, throat width. Um, I've changed the tracking, I've added some EQ. And here's what it sounds like with that synth. It's your and it's giving me this really cool like talk box. It's not quite a vocoder. It's not quite like a pitched effect. And uh, what I've done is I've mixed in a little bit of that control signal. Because that to me just sounds a little too synthetic, but if it's all signal, you're not gonna get any. So what I'm doing is I'm driving this back, driving this. So I'm kind of getting like an equal part uh, vocal that we've processed with the, the duo and the warm and then this articulator that is kind of running through serum So the way that this works is it's like a talk box So you could use this on a guitar track You could use this on a synth track You could use this really for any kind of melodic element and the preset that you pick will drastically change how this sounds So even if I you know just shift this up an octave Let me show you what that sounds like and swap this over and the way it's working is it's working like a talk box. So it's got a lot more functionality than something just like a vocoder. I love using a vocoder and I use vocoders all the time, but this is really cool for like a lead element. And then what I've done is I've just automated the things like the throat length and throat width, just to give me a little bit of extra movement. So uh, once I've done that, I just processed it with a little bit of warm to give me a little bit more saturation. I've DS'd it a little bit with Sybil, uh, with Sybil and then added just a little bit of compression and some repeater and some delay. So basically just giving me some room and some space, but just through Articulator, it sounds like this. Then we've got this. Then we got sit this. And then we just got this. And then mixing that in with that vocal just gives us this really cool thing. As you can see here, we even played like a little pitch bend, which is something people on a talk box will do quite a bit. So I think I'm gonna start using this plugin all the time for like talk box needs. I literally have a song I'm doing today after this video that we were gonna hire a talk box guy. So I'm, I'll probably just do it with this. Let's see how this sounds now going into this. And then very similarly, I have a second track right here that's got this. I'm just singing this line. Let me send it to a bus so you can actually hear it because again, I have this being routed the same exact way, going to a ghost bus, process the same. And I just sang this line over and over. Baby, if you wanna, if you wanna, I don't wanna. Baby, if you wanna, if you wanna, I don't wanna. 
The cool thing is I did sing it in the melody that I'm gonna play, but even if I didn't, you can change that to whatever you want. So let me go ahead and change this back to no bus. Now that it has no bus that it's being sent out to, but it's just sending to articulator, you can see here that I have picked a completely different preset. So this one's kind of giving me more of like a saw Juno lead sound. And what I'm doing is kind of processing it really similarly. I've just added kickstart to kind of give me some movement, but I have this vocal being processed through that synth and it sounds like this. And you can see that I'm still kind of uh, modulating this articulator, but I'm doing it a lot more gently. And the cool thing is that if I, you know, change this, I can knock this up to semitones. That's not in the key of the song, but that's a cool thing about using something like Vocodist or Articulator is that you kind of have that functionality to change it whenever you want. And then that's pretty much all of the stuff. I use that Articulator for the main lead. There is no other lead in this drop. Um, I used it, I kind of did like a repeat of the It's Your Call Cause Baby I'm All In. And uh, here's what the whole drop sounds like. Never thought I'd end up falling It's your call Cause baby I'm all in So now that I've shown you that, let's go through and let's play an entire run through. Here's the entire track. Once again, we've used some Serum, we've used some Omnisphere. We used quite a bit of the Autotune Unlimited bundle, including like Warm, uh, Duo, uh, Sybil, Autotune EFX, we've used Articulator. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at what this whole thing sounds like. I'm just gonna go up to the second verse because that's just a copy paste. Here we go, let's check this out. That's pretty much it. That is all that goes into making an electronic pop song. All right, and that's gonna do it. That is how to make an electronic pop song from start to finish. As you can see, it's really all about just finding a nice chord progression and kind of having a nice rhythm where everything feels pretty cohesive. And then it's all about getting that sound design. You saw us use some of the Antares plugins. Thank you again to them for sponsoring this video. Again, if you wanna read more about their giveaways, their Voxtronica celebration, or their Autotune Unlimited bundle, you can click that link in the description below. We get a little bit of kickback from that. And then other than that, if you have any questions or comments about this video, let us know in the comments down below. I'll answer whatever I possibly can. Let us know what videos you want to see in the near future. We will be back next week with more content, but until then, much love everyone. Peace.